Hey, my name is Mike Dishman. I run a small agency in Eugene, Oregon. I mostly do a lot of UX, UI for people. I do a lot of branding for companies and I do coaching and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for small businesses, small creative entrepreneurs that need to level up their company. This is gonna be a video of a ton of terms that you need to know before you go on your next sales call, before you do your next discovery session, before you get on the phone with your next lead, you need to know what these terms mean and how they apply to business. Because if you can talk to a business owner about their business with business terms, then they're gonna be a little more inclined to believe you. They're gonna be a little more inclined to trust you because you're using the language that they speak. We wanna speak the language of the clients who are trying to attain because it helps them empathize with us and makes it easier to make the sale. A-B testing. A-B testing, it's a way of figuring out which version of something is gonna work better. So for example, you could have an A-B test of two web designs. You put up one web design with a certain color, messaging, photography, typography, and offer. And you can do the same thing on the second one. Mix it up, change it up, send 50% of your traffic to one, send 50% of your traffic to the other, see which one does better, drop the shitty one, and then make another variation. See if you can make it better. See if you can improve upon it. Maybe this, maybe the new one is better than the older one. Get rid of that one. Raise your conversions. Raise your sales. Raise the performance of whatever it is you're doing. B is for beta test. A beta test is when you invite a small group of people to buy and use your product before you're ready to sell it to the general audience. It's a way to find bugs. It's a way to see how they feel about it. Do any other changes need to be made before it reaches the mass market? That kind of stuff. B is also for bootstrapping. Bootstrapping is when you start a business without any outside money or funding. The name comes from, we're gonna pull you up by your boot strings. C is for carrot. A carrot is a delicious gift that you give your soon to be subscribers in exchange for their email address. Another, hurt, another word you might hear is lead magnet. The idea that being whatever you're offering is so compelling and interesting that it pulls leads in. C is also for churn. Churn is the rate in which a business loses customers and has to get new ones. High churn is a problem because the higher the churn, the harder it is to grow a business. Every new customer you're bringing in is just replacing one that you've lost, which makes it really hard to grow. C is also for conversion. Conversion. Conversion is a fancy way of, some, of saying something of, we wanted the person that comes to us to do this and they did it. That's a conversion. Something like, we want people to come to our website and give us their email address. Well, once they come to the site and they give the email address, that's a conversion. If one person out of every 100 come to your site, give you the email, that's a 1% conversion. If you can raise that to every 50 out of 100 get it, you've just raised it to a 50% conversion. You're now God and clients will pay you anything. Good job. CR a CRM is a customer relationship management. CRMs typically, CRMs are typically a tool like Active Campaign or Envisionsoft. God, don't use Envisionsoft. But Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft. <laughs> don't use Infusionsoft. But you know, software like that, it tells you what your customers are all, are all about and what you know about them currently. It allows you to segment data that you know about your customers to do specific email campaigns. Okay, CTA, call to action. A call to action is the thing on your website or brochure or business card or blimp that you sent up into the air that tells the person that you're talking to what it is you want them to do. Typically on a website, you would have, you know, let's say the website colors are black and blue like mine. When you go to my website, my calls to action should be something a little brighter, like pink or red or yellow, something different than anything else on the whole site. So when they come and they're scrolling through, they see the bright call out and they go, oh, I need to do that thing. I need to do this call to action. I feel, I feel called as if someone has called me to action. All right, this is starting to get long. Customer avatar, customer avatar, another C. Customer avatar, it's a fictional character that marketers create to kind of envision and empathize with their target customer. So you kind of create this person, you make them up and you make up their issues and their problems. And typically the issues, problems, and all the data that you're telling about this person is gathered from actual data and the research that you've done about your target market. You craft a person and then you, then you build your products for that person specifically. 
It's just an easier way to target and identify and keep everyone on the same page when you have a customer avatar profile all figured out and in a document somewhere that your whole team can look at and refer to. All right, now we're in the D for direct marketing and indirect marketing. Direct marketing and indirect marketing refer, refer to two different strategies for letting your customers know about your company and your product. Direct marketing, customers are learning about your company or product directly from you. Examples of direct marketing would be things like emails, Facebook ads, Google ads, telemarketing calls, blog content, that sort of thing. Okay, cut out the part about the blog. That's not, that's not part of it. That's indirect marketing. I've that up, my bad. Now we're gonna talk about what indirect marketing is. Indirect, mar indirect marketing, customers are hearing about you. Customers are hearing about you from another source, like an affiliate partner, a social media platform, a blog. Evergreen content, now we're in the e Evergreen content is content that you make that's really, really good and will stand the test of time when people eight, 10 years from now are searching for stuff, your content will still come up and be relevant. And that's going to be kind of content like this, to be honest with you. This video that I'm making right now is evergreen content. These terms probably are never going to change. They're, they're, they've been around for years and they're going to be around for years. And this video will still be relevant years down the line when newbie entrepreneurs are trying to learn about these kind of terms. Now we're in the F's for funnel. And I'm in the funnel, funnel, funnel. I hate them because they, I hate funnels. But anyway, funnels are cool. Funnels aren't cool. A funnel is a sales journey of your customer or a series of steps that you want them to take with the ultimate goal of getting something out of them, like getting them to sign up for an email marketing campaign, getting them to buy a course, getting them to order one-on-one -on -one coaching from your boy. And if you're not on my, in my funnel, go get in my funnel. There's links on my website for my funnel. I think there's links at the bottom of this video that says something about sign up for a list. Get on that list, guys. Get in my funnel. Get in my funnel. Oh, I should probably drink some water. Growth hacking is an extremely annoying term that a lot of people use, and it's really stupid to be honest with you. Every time someone says it, I'm like, really growth hacking, really? Oh yeah, hey, can you just growth hack us? Hey, I wanna start a business, but you know, I don't know how. Do you think you could just hack our growth? Basically growth hacking is this. It's uh, being smart, it's being risky, high risk, high reward. That's growth hacking. And you hope to God that it works because if it doesn't work, you'll probably get fired. But if it does work, then you get to be rewarded with the term growth hacker. Wow. I like to think of cool shit to do in different unorthodox ways. That's like, that's like what I get paid for. I love doing that. I'm a growth hacker, guys. I'm the guy that I hate. <laughs> Are we still recording? Are we still recording? I don't know. I can't tell. Now we're in the eyes. Idea validation. What does that mean, Mike? I don't know. Let's read about it. The first step to starting a profitable, the profitable business is to come up with a really good idea. And before we start spending money on developing it out, we need to figure out a way to validate that idea. I typically do something like a design sprint to validate ideas. So we can talk about that a little later in another video. But that's basically what idea validation is. You want to validate your idea before you start pumping money into research and development. You want to make sure that there is an actual valid product here. So typically you make an MVP, a minimum viable product. Don't you worry. That's going to come up in the M's. Don't, don't worry. Inbound versus outbound. We're still in the eyes, and we're also adding on an O word, but it's okay. It's fine. Just calm down. Inbound and outbound marketing refers to two different strategies to acquire new customers. I'm gonna have to read this one. Inbound marketing is a strategy that draws customers to your business. This can be done via social media marketing, paid ads, SEO, and branding and reputation. Outbound marketing, on the other hand, is your business going to your customers through cold calling or being at trade shows, for example. I think we're gonna, we're gonna skip this whole thing. Might cut out inbound and outbound marketing. Information product is next. We're still in the eyes. Information products are products that convey an expertise in the form of information. So for example, you buy an information product, you, uh, a great information product from the future is their proposal, is their perfect proposal kit and their complete case study. Those two products are absolutely amazing informational products because you can you learn from the information and you apply it directly to your company, to your proposals and your case studies. And it actually directly 
literally makes you more money by landing you more jobs. It's actually, it's, it's amazing. I'm going to link that in my description too. Go buy those things, use them, and your clients will be blown away when they see this shit. It will level up your business so much more. I grew this burn, this beard because of Ben Burns. That's not true, but it might be true. The next term is IP. You may be hearing that Samsung just came out with a new IP for something, or Apple is going to release a new IP, it means intellectual property. That's all it means. That's what it means. It's intangible assets, business ideas, and concepts. It's a weird, it's a weird word, but that's what it means. So use it in your calls. It makes you sound really smart. A lead. L for lead. A lead is just somebody who may or may not be interested in your product or service. There's different levels of leads. There's cold, warm, hot. A cold lead is somebody who doesn't really know anything about you. A warm lead is somebody who's been introduced to you. And a hot lead is somebody who wants to buy your shit right now. So if the whole point of a funnel is to take a lead from cold and slowly warm them up into hot by giving them little bits of information, little bits of social proof, little bits of expertise, anything and everything that can get them to trust you little by little to inch them up into the buy zone. M for mastermind. Mastermind is a group of like-minded entrepreneurs that get together and they share their thoughts, ideas, their problems, their issues. It's a place of community where people can come together and be honest and grow together without having to worry about conflict of interests and going together and leaking information and that kind of stuff. It's very hard to find a really good group of people like that. I have it in the semi pros and the future pro group. And I highly recommend that you find your own little community, your own, make your own little mastermind. And you try to get people together with, with a like-minded vision and goal that you have. So the people that you hang out with are just like you. They want the same thing you want. You guys can share in the same goals and victories and struggles. It's huge. Join, join a pro group. That's what it is. Join a pro group. I have a video about this minimum viable product MVP. That's what I make. I make digital MVPs for companies and startups all the time. One of my favorite things I do. An MVP is a minimum viable product to make sure that the product is worth making at all. It's a way to construct something that is that can be tested with users to validate whether or not we should pump a bunch of money into this bad boy. A niche niche. A niche is a specific part of a market you're targeting. For me, I'm targeting creatives. We got the top of the funnel, which is creatives. And then it gets funneled down to designers. And then it gets funneled down to designers who run their own business. And then it gets funneled down to designers who run their own business and also would like to grow. Then we get down here. And that's where my, that's where I, those are the kind of people that I want on this channel. They're going to get the most out of these kind of videos. P is for pivot and pivoting is huge in business. If you don't pivot, you die. If you don't pivot, you will go out of business because nothing that you do is going to last forever. You have to embrace the changes that come through history and you need to pivot to stay in line with them. A huge example that I can think of right at the top of my head is Sears. They were a gigantic corporation massive the biggest one of the biggest in history and they failed to pivot with the technological changes of the internet online ordering and all of that kind of stuff because they decided not to pivot with that they are now going out of business you don't even see sears stores anymore roi roi is the return on investment People love using ROI. ROI means if I spend this amount of money, how much money will I get back? How, how will I know that this was a good return on my investment? If I spend a dollar on a Snickers bar and I eat it and then I get nothing out of it but some acne and a shitty, shitty feeling in my stomach, that's not a very good ROI. But if I buy a DSLR for 800 bucks and every weekend I take 10 shots with it, and I sell those shots for X amount of money and I make a bunch of money back, then that camera was a great, has a great ROI. SAAS is a service kind of like, you know, Dropbox or Slack, where you pay a monthly subscription for a service that solves a certain issue. Very popular in today's day and age with subscription, with subscription model services, like Adobe Creative Cloud. Subscri subscription as a service. I mean, software as a service. <laughs> It's not subscription as a service, software as a service. And it's just like Adobe. You guys get it. You knew what that was. That was a, that one was a joke. That one was just a joke. Dumbledore, a solopreneur is someone who creates a business all by themselves. 
That's it, it's an entrepreneur, but they're by themselves. It has nothing to do with Han Solo. Disney, do not claim this video because I said Han Solo. That would be messed up, but I wouldn't be surprised. Sweat equity. Woo! Sweat equity describes investments into a business or venture that can't be summed up in clean numerical values. Target market, we're in the T's. Target market is the target market that you're going after. So before you ever do anything, before you ever launch anything or design anything or talk about what a logo or color should look like, you should have a target market set out for your product, for the thing you're designing, for the service you're giving. You need to define your target market or you will not know who to design for. Your design decisions should all depend on who your target market is. If it doesn't speak to your target market, then who is it speaking to? If it doesn't speak to your target market, then it's not going to be very successful. Is this still recording? I don't know how many things I just said. I don't know how many items we just talked about. I'm going to guess it's like 15 or something like that. I'm going to say 15. So this has been 15 ish. I'll count them when I'm editing uh, tips. This has been 20. This has been 15 terms that you should know before you get on a sales call, before you get on a discovery call with your next client. You should study these terms. Make sure you know them. So if the client says them, you, you know what they're talking about. And also, if you can kind of work them into your vocabulary little by little, you will be able to gain a lot more trust a lot quicker from small business owners because you will be speaking their language. It will immediately feel like, oh, this person I'm talking to, they understand what it's like to run a small business. They understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And if you can give them that feeling, then there's much more of a chance they're gonna trust you, a much bigger chance that they're gonna hire you, and a much bigger chance that everything's gonna work out really well and you guys are gonna have a great engagement. All right. Okay, I gotta get a haircut because I'm tired, so tired of wearing this hat. That was this video. Please smash the like button, subscribe, comment. Let me know if I missed any terms. What, what terms do you use in your calls? What do you hear all the time? Let me know in the comments. Fill those comments up, guys. I need the engagement. Share these videos on Facebook. Hit the notification bell, by the way, guys. If you hit the notification bell, you'll be alerted when I release videos. And they're randomly released all the time. So you never know. You never know when no one's coming. All right, now we're gonna. I'm gonna go watch Game of Thrones, the last episode of Game of Thrones. CRMs typically, for example, if you had a list of 100 people on your email list, they were all men, half of the men really liked NASCAR racing, and the other half of the men really liked Kentucky Derby racing, but they're both, you know, they're two completely different things, really. And so you have an offer, and the offer is, oh, you, you like race cars? Well, we're gonna get, this is fucking stupid. Just for, forget all of this. Get rid of all of this, Mike. Just tell them what a CRM is. Don't say anything else. Oh my God.